My name is Thomas Ironstone. I lead the Management Solutions Division at CR Group, acquisitive company. We are premier board partner in North America. My professional background covers everything from consulting in the realm of accounting, finance, strategy execution. I've delivered comprehensive corporate performance management engagements across multiple industries, covering multi-billion dollar organizations, all the way down to some mid-market organizations that are either publicly traded, private, and public sector. For today's agenda, we're gonna be covering today's evolving business challenges. We're gonna be discussing how to prepare and execute on that. We'll look at the board intelligent planning platform, and then we'll cover this in the context of the future of FPNA, and then we'll be looking at some success stories. At CR Group, acquisitive company, we strive to be your organization's trusted partner for business technology transformation. Our teams are composed of individuals that have both business and technology backgrounds. Our solution portfolio is designed to help address today's challenges and drive performance. Our corporate performance management practice has been in this business for over 30 years, covering everything from budgeting, planning, forecasting, financial consolidation, strategic management, executive and operational dashboards, analytics, and much more. We are known to decipher some of the most complex problems and provide solutions. It is no surprise to all of us that the business world is becoming a very data-rich place and it continues to grow. However, despite being data rich, many organizations are not able to harness it for driving insights and corporate performance. As the data wave is cresting, another large wave is cresting with disruptions such as supply chain shocks, financial crises, cyber threats, and of course the pandemic. This is increasingly putting organizations to the test and heavily cha challenging the planning function within our organizations. For organizations not only to compete, but to survive in today's landscape, the business leaders need to have a better up-to-date insight and forward-looking views of the organization, covering the demand pipeline, impact on resourcing, currency requirements, raw material procurement, and distribution and logistics. We can no longer rely on a once a year budget cycle that is manual, error prone, lacks transparency, doesn't have that driver based visibility that we would want. And as the aforementioned disruptions are pushing organizations to transform the planning function to be agile, fast, and more automation with increased transparency, this is critical. Otherwise organizations find themselves behind the eight ball and are opening themselves up to more risk. With consideration to the what, and what we just talked about is a really big what, what organizations are looking for is the how, how to drive a more intelligent approach to business planning. Here's where we introduce the board intelligent planning platform. It helps organizations drive uh, ability to plan smarter, drive outcomes and lead transformation as opposed to lagging the competitors in the industry. In this platform, it covers everything from smart planning, uh, being able to drive forward-looking forecasts, uh, strategic management linking to overall organization strategy and analytical capabilities. So we talked about uncertainty, volatility, complexity, and competition. With this platform that's designed to be agile, be able to tap into various data sources, drive what-if scenario planning, this platform is really a platform of the future. So why board? The board intelligent platform is tremendously powerful. The data modeling capabilities deliver dynamic what if scenario planning with driver based variable driven planning models, real time single source of the truth industry leading, indus with industry leading data modeling and management capabilities. Also the ability to have explainable predictions with data driven analytics and plans. And of course, continuous alignment within the organization with ongoing uh, process controls and integrate integration across the organization and in, into various data sources. Board is able to tap into your, your various data sources. So whether it's uh, 
on the cloud or on-prem, board can tap into your ERP or accounting systems, your customer relationship management systems or XRM systems, data warehouses, and various other cloud applications that you use to run the organization. Board also delivers intelligent solutions for all areas of the organization, including finance, supply chain, retail, human resources, sales, and operations. Board has tremendously powerful capabilities around process modeling and automation to help solve complex business problems in, a, uh, in conjunction with collaboration tools and intuitive user interface. From a user experience standpoint, Board has engaging interface, enterprise reporting engine, and also the ability to deliver self-service analytics for business leaders across the organization. This also helps drive collaborations, uh, drive collaboration across the organization, leveraging features like storytelling, contextual discussion, and real-time sharing, as well as engaging folks at the right time through alerts and workflow. Board also has process auto automation with no coding, with ha with has data modeling, calculations, and of course, on the fly aggregations and the ability to run the scenarios and simulations. From an integration standpoint, Board allows you to securely, securely in integrate with all of your critical platforms and retrieve data, and also integrate with your various authentication platforms that you might want to use to be able to enter the platform and ensure that from an IT cybersecurity standpoint, that the platform is fully secure and meeting your needs. The finance function is one of the major benefactors of this platform. With integrated planning, linking into enterprise strategy, being able to model plans covering everything from growth, margin expansion, being able to model treasury impact, being able to do capital make capital, capital allocation decisions uh, with the platform. So from a finance function, this has truly been uh, a very uh, rich area from, from a platform standpoint. However, board can also uh, provide positive impact to supply chain. So we see this going across the organization. And it's becoming so critical these days being able to provide more visibility, allow us to manage our portfolio with comprehensive demand planning, inventory planning, as well as having more visibility into our plans and forecasts around manufacturing and supply planning. And at the retail level, if your organization has, whether it's um, bricks and mortar or if it's e-commerce, the, the platform itself allows you to drive decisions through merchandising, covering everything from open to buy, and of course, making critical replenishment decisions. For the sales function within organizations, the board platform enables sales teams to cover everything from planning across territories, setting and monitoring quotas, being able to drive pipeline automation, and of course, ongoing dynamic forecasting, whether it's at the quarterly, monthly, weekly level, or even daily level for that matter, board can help drive insights and planning. We have been able to align our organizations uh, with the board platform to align our organization and the people within the organization. And what board is able to do is deliver detailed workforce planning, be able to model compensation within the platform down to a very detailed granular level, as well as manage talent and lo the location strategy, being able to know where your resources are and how to allocate and make those critical decisions. Now we'll cover some real world cases. With over 200 customers globally, Board works for organizations virtually across all industries, whether that's private or publicly traded, NGOs, not for private or public sector. The Board platform is tremendously versatile and can work across all industries and meet those requirements because of Board's powerful modeling capabilities. So a few examples, uh, MetaV Blue Cross. Uh, with this model, the scale of the organization, uh, over 14 managers, and this has been growing, uh, 14 divisions, 21 cost centers. And the, really the goal here was to deliver multi-contributor budgeting. So the project started with revenue budgeting, looking at specific programs, being able to model out cost center planning, including detailed personnel models and workforce planning with over tw uh, uh, 2,000 employees, 
Uh, also the ability to create unique templates for communications, leasing and renting, and of course, uh, capital allocation. And with this also be able to design a detailed workflow with multi-level approvals and versioning. And of course, integration into the financial systems. For Nutrition International, a global NGO, the goal here was to set up a program-based planning model. The scale of this was over 56 country managers, directors, and corporate staff, covering three regions, 18 countries, 47 cost centers, and then down into the project level, covering 11 interventions with over 270 projects. So with this, we were able to address their needs covering across uh, all areas of the organization, uh, being able to facilitate planning at the direct or, or pure level, allocated level, and also indirect planning covering everything from operating expenses, personnel, rent, travel, and of course, allocations. With this, the board platform also helped uh, Nutrition International deliver program-based reporting and dashboards connecting country managers and regions across the globe. And of course, as you can tell the theme here as well, board's ability to integrate with existing systems, and in this case, integrating with their ERP and custom database applications. For those of you that are familiar with uh, CFL, football, um, Ottawa Sports and Entertainment Group, uh, again, leveraging the board platform. For them, the overall organization scaled across 10 companies, 34 departments, with two professional sports franchises, including the Ottawa Red, Red Blacks and Ottawa 67s, with also a complex 360,000 square foot shopping and entertainment district and an 18 acre urban uh, park. So the project here was to deliver financial reporting and the ability to execute scenario planning and forecasting capabilities. And with this, as you could tell, there's obviously back office services, there's sports teams, there's also retail. So the idea to streamline data allocations across those different business units, and of course, be able to have audit trail and visibility into that. Another interesting uh, real world example is Coppers Incorporated, a publicly traded firm. So their goal is to have enhanced global financial reporting. And this was covering over 100 companies many plants, uh, uh, 700 plus employees with many products and many customers. So the project here was to move away from legacy systems and numerous Excel models to have an automated planning and reporting platform in board. So to allow business users to be able to easily create and manage GL based reports through simple selections and also leverage account ranges and account schedules and the ability to create standardized controlled global financial reporting, such as income statement and balance sheet that are uh, SOX compliant and be able to deliver that out to the business leaders across the organization. So from an accessibility standpoint, as we think about uh, the cloud, we looked at some real world, world examples. With the board platform, it's helping organizations meet deadlines uh, on time as opposed to falling behind in the schedule, whether that's from a, a financial close perspective, month end, um, uh, it could be your year end, as well as from a planning and forecasting cycle to make sure that we're hitting our deadlines and also be able to produce timely forecasts. As we talked about integration, that's key here. With board's ability to tap into whether your financial systems or supporting systems, that automated integration to be able to pull the data into the platform keeps everything up to date from a reporting and planning perspective. So now we're actually empowering users, no matter where they are, no matter what day it is, no matter what time of day it is, to allow them to collaborate, get their reporting, be able to facilitate collaborative planning, and be able to complete budgets and forecasts and reporting on time. Now let's take a look at the actual board platform itself. I'll take you through a, a sample demo model so you can get an idea of uh, some of the flavors as far as uh, what board can do. We'll be looking at integrated business planning and um, we'll also be looking at a digital boardroom which will cover uh, dashboards and uh, enterprise level uh, reporting. So first off, we're gonna look at integrated business planning as I mentioned. So with this, we're gonna cover the budgeting process here, the budgeting and forecasting process. So with this, as you can tell already, 
board's intuitive design allows us to have very visual workflow to know individuals, uh, to know the sequence of steps that go into preparing your plans and forecasts, as well as to understand the uh, linkages between the different components of your overall model. So as you can see here, if we do everything from planning, from end to end, covering from sales to production, to purchasing, to human resources and marketing, and then ultimately feeding into FP&A, covering everything from uh, your uh, general and administrative expenses, also your CapEx, and then looking at financing as well. So I'll take it, you through a little tour here. We'll start at the sales end. And as you can imagine with these different functions, this is getting uh, planning and forecasting to be extending across the organization as opposed to be a purely financial function. This is moving it from being more FPNA to XPNA, which is extended planning and analysis, where we're putting this in the, the hands of the leaders across the organization. So this puts it with the sales team, it puts it with your production and procurement teams, it puts it in the hands of your HR teams, as well as your marketing teams, and much more. So starting with sales, with this, as you can imagine, giving access to your sales team, the different, which also from a security standpoint, they might break it out by different uh, channels or region. So from a security standpoint, you can lock down the platform to ensure that people only have access to say certain areas of the planning process, as well as, well as certain cross sections. As an example, maybe a specific region, department, whatever that might be, board has the ability to lock it down to ensure that people only see what they should be seeing. So as, this, we, as we look at a sales plan, and again, this is just an example, the idea is when we start the year, when we're setting our baseline definitions, we might be looking at the different channels, our different product groups, our different products. We might wanna have a baseline, whether it's using last year's actuals, actuals from a couple of years ago, or maybe using the predictive analytics engine and board to come up with uh, a best estimate plan that might be the starting point that we then augment and adjust. So with this, as you can tell, we have the different products. We have everything from pricing, volumes, and then ultimately uh, also discounts, which ultimately produces our overall sales plan. So in this, as you can tell, uh, if we're looking at our different channels, so whether it's um, here from a channel perspective, uh, this could also be um, uh, uh, divisions, whatever uh, might be the requirement, but the idea here from a security standpoint, when we set it up, you could have stores, wholesale, large account, e-commerce. So when someone logs in, if someone can only see wholesale, when they log in, they would strictly just see wholesale. They wouldn't see anything else. But as an administrator, or maybe as the uh, sales director or head of sales, when they come in, they could see everything. And they would come in, they would look at the baseline. Uh, there might be certain products that we're no longer planning for this year, so you might disable those. And then we'll get into the new product planning as well. So you set up the net price for those various products. Once, those, uh, once that has been inputted into the platform, you save it and you can see what that looks like over the course of the year. Uh, from a workflow standpoint, as you can tell, this might be the first step in the process from the sales plan. We can then move into the next step. So after we set our baseline definitions, the next step might be starting to think through new product launches. So of course, if we have our own uh, set of products that we're planning for, as you introduce new products, you might wanna say, we have an idea for a new product. It's obviously uh, still going through the, um, the planning process, but we wanna be able to include it in the budget or in the forecast. And we might wanna say this particular product, uh, we don't have a name for it yet. So you can actually add it to the plan. And then once that product actually comes online, you can assign that particular product to the actual SKU number. So from an actuals and budgets and forecast perspective, everything's linked together, which is quite powerful. Then you can also set specific uh, attributes associated with that product that might drive uh, pricing and price lists as an example. Uh, so that could be everything from the style, uh, the price positioning. So whether it's entry level, uh, professional, deluxe, that would be obviously unique to the organization. And then also different features, such as in this case, it might be steel, ceramic, silver plated. 
and you would have those drop down lists that you can choose from. And again, this is purely uh, an example, but uh, this gives you the idea as we're working through the planning process, thinking through in sequ sequential steps that we have our baseline plan, we're adding new pro products, and we're starting to think how we're going to deliver on whatever our growth goals are for the year. The next step in the plan might be finalizing the sales target for the sales team. So depending on how you look at this, uh, it could be based on uh, product groupings. It could be just based on regions. Uh, the, the platform can be configured any which way. But as you can see here, uh, here we're able to finalize the sales target by the different, it could be different companies, uh, it could be legal entities if you're multinational the different business units or product groups. So in this case, it's store. Uh, so here we have watches, knives, uh, writing tools, instruments. It could be the channels and then ultimately finalizing the target at the salesperson level. So we've gone through, we've analyzed last year's data. We might've ran it through the predictive analytics engine. We come up with a baseline plan. We decide what products we're keeping, adding, and then finalizing what our targets are, what our quotas are for the sales team. And once that's done from a workflow standpoint, you can assign it. And then once it's approved, it's locked down. No one can change that. And we have visibility across the sales teams and the organization. And you can have the breakdown so you can, so the sales team can understand where their quotas are, maybe by different product groups, services, whatever that might be. The next step in the process from a sales budgeting standpoint, now that the targets have been set, is to do the final review and see how this aligns to the strategic plan. So of course, organizations leading up into the initial budget cycle, there's a strategic planning process that goes into place, uh, in, in, that comes into play where we might be coming up with a multi-year plan, set growth targets, and that can be also done with inside the board platform, which I'll touch upon momentarily. But the idea is that those growth plans can then cascade and feed down into the overall planning process. So here we're able to see how that lines up. We can see that this was the overall growth target. Are there any gaps? And then we get that summarized view. We can go back, finalize some revisions, close the gap, and then we have everything locked down, in this case at the sales rep, region, product, channel level. And then that will be our base plan for the year. And of course, when we get into reforecasting, that might be revised as time goes on. Then we get to the final approval process. So with board, one of the powerful pieces of functionality is the workflow. So we go through this whole planning process. We're building, we're creating our different drafts of the, of the plan. Then ultimately we want it to lock it down. And then we want to have the business leaders approve that because as we know, we want to put the planning process in the hands of the business leaders to drive accountability. So if, say from the sales director level, they've approved their plan, they've signed off on it. And in this from a workflow standpoint, it'll stamp it with the username, the timestamp, and then you, there's no um, uh, arguing that this is not a plan that they did not approve because they have went through, they've re uh, reviewed it, there's an audit trail, and now they're held accountable for this from uh, a business standpoint. So now they can trust the budget themselves. They've invested time into it. They've built it up, and they put their stamp of approval on it. So that covers the budgeting process from a sales standpoint. And of course, this is a fully integrated planning process. So that sales plan that's now set now has to flow through into operations. So if we're thinking from a demand standpoint, how are we gonna meet our demand from a, a resourcing standpoint uh, and from a manufacturing production distribution standpoint? So that sales plan then feeds into overall production. So first off, when we think about the, the products, we have our finished goods. Those finished goods, and we'll look at this in more simplistic terms right now, but those finished goods could have a bill of materials and their um, consumption of various resources, whether that's like electricity, gas, storage, packaging, whatever that might be. And there could be standard costs or variable costs associated uh, with that. 
So you're able to set those different uh, standard costs or variable costs in the platform. And then based on the demand, we also know what those variable costs will be. So if we want to uh, do scenario planning, understand if uh, the overall cost from a consumption standpoint, the cost of electricity is going up, the cost of gas is going up, what's going to be the impact on our bottom line? So we can actually play around with that and then that will flow through from a scenario standpoint. We can see the impact from a profitability standpoint. Do we make, need to make critical decisions around pricing? If the uh, cost of electricity and gas is going up, do we need to adjust pricing? Is that going to affect our sales volumes? You can run all those scenarios with inside the platform. After we set up our cost definitions, now we think of the actual um, uh, workload standpoint from a production plan. So the volume flows into our production plan. We might have lead times, obviously, that go into our production process. If uh, there's intermediate steps that go into um, manufacturing these goods. And then that all feeds into the plan to make sure from a lead time perspective that the goods are being manufactured and produced and on hand and meet those minimum uh, level of inventory requirements. And with that, from a manufacturing standpoint as well, is there's resource requirements uh, in terms of the hours that take to run the shifts to produce those um, different products uh, for different production runs. And we're able to get full visibility of that across our different products, our different uh, plants, and um, be able to have full visibility across cost and profitability to be able to manufacture in those different plants. So next is from a production standpoint, ultimately this then has to roll into purchasing and procurement. So we're manufacturing goods. We know what the requirements are from a finished goods standpoint and what the plan will be from a, whether it's weekly or monthly basis. Next, we need to make some critical decisions around procurement, raw materials as an example. So with this, now that we know our production plan, one of the pieces here is the variable costs associated with our raw materials. So we might have a unit cost for those different components that go into our bill materials that we're, man that we're manufacturing. So with this, whether it's uh, different units of measure, whether it's each is, uh, it could be liters, it could be um, uh, grams, whatever it might be, you can set that up within the platform. This could also be pulled in from your ERP system as well. So being able to link into your ERP, pull in your uh, full list of items, bill of materials, what the unit of measure are and the linkages within the um, manufacturing bill of material roll up. And then in, from a raw material standpoint, now we know that based on all those linkages, to manufacture these particular goods, it's going to be consuming these raw materials, which will then be uh, consumed at these different rates. So in this case here, we see a unit cost that we can adjust. And these products or these raw materials could be purchased from different vendors, which might be in different currencies. And then we can actually make those decisions as well to say that if we're buying this raw material from this vendor in this currency, and this is the FX rate, we know what the impact is gonna be from a profitability standpoint. And then from a, a budget, you can flex the budget to understand that if um, exchange rates fluctuate one way, and if we're buying from this vendor, this is gonna be the uh, cost impact and better understand the profitability of manufacturing that product using that particular item. So the granularity that you can go into here, as you can see, is quite deep. The next step here from a purchasing standpoint, now that we understand the raw materials, could be from uh, the overall view from a finished good perspective. So now we see the purchase plan, so the quantity of those items, the overall unit cost, and now we can understand from a total cost perspective. This also helps uh, the finance team plan from a treasury standpoint, because if we're also planning uh, not only procurement and making sure that we're uh, buying these goods um, and being able to take advantage of uh, particular um, uh, procurement uh, or purchasing uh, um, uh, benefits, whether it's terms and purchasing terms in the 30 days, 60 days, but also um, from a treasury standpoint with currency. This has been very powerful for organizations that rely on goods, raw materials that are coming from other countries, and also 
uh, working across multiple um, uh, regions of the globe. So here we can actually understand, say, how much US dollars we need, how much euros we need, and when. So now the Treasury Board has, or the, treas the, the Treasury Group within the organization has the ability to have insights to know how much currency we need on hand to actually uh, meet the, these demands from a raw material standpoint. So as we've gone through sales, we looked at production, purchasing. The other hand of all, the other side of all this is the HR aspect, being able to fulfill the demand for our overall um, plan for the year. So this can be broken out into variable labor. So in this case, it might be referred to blue collar or um, back office staff or salaried staff, which in this case referring here as white collar, and then the overall uh, summation of the salaries. So with this, from a production standpoint, we understand what the production requirements are, what the production runs are, what the shifts are. Then we look at uh, the total FTEs in those different regions for those different plants and the different positions. And we're able to understand, uh, to be able to meet those production requirements, to meet those shifts, we have these required FTEs. In this case, it's showing it by month, but it could be broken down into week if required, as an example. And then we can see where the gap is. So we might be, have to fill that gap by hiring more, more people, leveraging maybe uh, contract, contract staff as well, or temporary staff to be able to fill those fluctuations in demand. And this provides a forward-looking view from a resourcing standpoint to know that to meet this demand, we need this level of resourcing and that helps the operational team make those plans and make those um, recruitment and hiring decisions. Then from a calculation standpoint, we can also set up things like uh, grades or pay levels. So as you can see here, there could be different pay grades or uh, pay levels within the organization. And based on what we're hiring, or maybe someone's coming up to um, uh, a particular anniversary where they might graduate into a different pay grade, board will be able to calculate that at a very granular detail level to make sure that salaries are calculated and phased correctly, overtime calculations, as well as all of the other payroll uh, and uh, payroll and uh, uh, workforce related benefits, such as could be CPP, EI, EHT, WSIB. So you can set up all of these rates and caps to make sure that everything's calculated and phased correctly. So you're getting a very accurate budget from a workforce standpoint to make sure that calculate, uh, salaries are calculated correctly, benefits are calculated correctly, and payroll taxes are calculated correctly and phased and capped in the correct months. Then from a back office staff, uh, whether that's finance, IT, uh, could be some of the leaders in the sales team, um, uh, HR. So all of this other uh, group of the workforce that help run the organization, we also have the ability to, to plan from a salary standpoint in terms of what is their annual salary, uh, what was their start date, uh, maybe someone's going on leave so you can set an end date, um, that kind of thing. So in this, you're able to set, again, pay grades as an example, what their overall salary is, and then be able to plan uh, from a, also a resourcing standpoint. So if there's a vacant position or if there's a new position that's being created, you can add that into the plan, make sure it's linked correctly to a position and a salary so that the salaries are going to be calculated correctly. And you have the ability in board, which is also quite powerful, to separate the planning from a, a, um, a payroll dollar standpoint versus the FTE planning. Some organizations do this very centralized, where the whole payroll process, uh, payroll planning process, is done within, say, just the payroll finance group, and they'll do the plan, and then only the cost centers or departments see the final calculated total dollars at their department GL account level. However, in board, we have the ability to decentralize that process, lock certain modules down, lock cross sections of this down so people only see their staff, and then to take a step 
deeper have the ability to if you want them to have full access to plan overall uh, their payroll plan in terms of salaries increases bonuses or just split it out so that they can just plan in terms of heads or FTEs full-time equivalents to say that uh, I'm, I need these heads by month I need to hire this person this person's going on leave and they can plan that way and then that feeds into the overall payroll plan in terms of dollars salaries and benefits that the payroll team would then have access to to be able to uh, review the calculated results that are getting pushed out of the board platform and with this as we talked about all of the financials and your erp system where a board can tap in to pull in your gl data chart of accounts uh, all of your transactions uh, items, bill of materials, customers, the sales subledger data. Board also has the ability to tap into your HRIS or, pay, or payroll systems to be able to pull in your rosters of individuals in the organization, uh, what their positions are, uh, their location, uh, pay grades, things like that, that need to feed the plan and keep this a fully integrated planning platform. So board can tap in, pull in the rosters, and then that gets updated from a planning standpoint. And so you make sure it ensures that the system's up to date and leveraging the full uh, gamut of data that you have within the organization. And this also helps not having multiple tools to feed the planning process because some uh, organizations might have a planning tool for sales, a different planning tool for manufacturing and operations, a different planning tool for HR and payroll, a different planning tool for marketing. And you have all these different platforms everywhere. But as you can see with inside board, it's a fully integrated uh, toolkit that allows us to have a holistic view of planning. So we're able to do this all in one place. So now, as we look at the FTE side of the uh, back office staff, now we're looking at the actual calculated salaries and benefits. So here, as we talked about, we can set up all of the rate tables for things like CPP, EI, WSIB, EHT, uh, all of those different payroll rates. Uh, you can, if you have pension, that kind of thing, you can set up those rates in the system. So now when we do the planning, same idea when we looked at the uh, variable labor component, board can calculate out the uh, those same payroll um, taxes and benefits to make sure that it's using the right rate, ensure that it's capping out once it reaches a certain level, that you're getting a very accurate uh, budget from a workforce standpoint. So moving along here, we've covered everything from the sales plan end to end, feeding into the production uh, planning process, feeding into the procurement and purchasing uh, area, and then also from a, a workforce standpoint, being able to do our planning by variable labor, fixed labor, getting our full salary dollars. Now we might also want to look at some of our operational and cost center expenses. So let's have a look at marketing. So with this, we're able to plan out for the particular department from a very basic concept from an operational expense standpoint, uh, board has the full capability to be able to do your plan by cost center, by GL account, by month, and be able to use different drivers to calculate out those rates or just input, say, straight dollar amounts into those and be able to add comments. You also have the ability to create very unique templates. So in this case, say from a marketing standpoint, you get that same level of granularity in terms of uh, the marketing department, but then, and also the, the related expenses around marketing, advertising, campaigns, thing, uh, sponsorships, things like that. But then you can actually break it out into more granularity. So if you're planning out specific campaigns, you can itemize that, uh, say the vendor that you're working with, what the costs are. So you can input those, those values and time it out correctly. And even if you needed to link it maybe to a particular brand. So if you need to get a fully allocated PNL from a cost perspective to know that this campaign, campaign is related to the specific uh, business unit, then we can link that within the platform to make sure that it's getting allocated correctly. And so in this, as you can see, different items, sponsorship, press releases, conferences. So you have all of this, and then you can drill down into the details. Uh, let's look at, say, in-store marketing. We can see the breakdown by month and seeing how that's phased. 
look at prior year comparatives, look at prior prior year comparatives to see how that's trending over time. And if there's any gaps in terms of, is this a big increase over last year or the year before, or is this significantly down to help the person doing the, the overall plan to know maybe they might be missing something or maybe they've uh, overestimated something as well. And then as you'll see to the right here, uh, one key thing that I want to make sure that as the folks that are watching this uh, demonstration is that one of the powerful, beautiful things about board is that it gives us all of the ability to build these planning and forecasting templates, but also have that visualization on those same screens. And this makes board very unique that you can set up your templates and have visuals so people doing the planning as I talked about, there might be some anomalies or something that they might have overestimated or underestimated. Someone doing the planning would right away see, as an example, our plan for marketing is significantly down over last year and this month. Let me drill into those details and see maybe I missed something. So it draws visually the ability to take action and plan correctly and be able to spot those anomalies. All right, and so that sort of wraps up a bit of the planning process. Um, ultimately, of course, that feeds into the overall uh, larger planning aspect, whether it's from a capital allocation, capital expenditure perspective, financing decisions. So I'll jump into that briefly. So if you're working with, uh, uh, if, you, if you have fixed assets or if you have capital projects, board has the full capability to allow organizations to plan for that. So we can obviously pull in your existing fix, fixed asset register uh, from a capital project perspective. There might be work in progress of, of um, ex expenditures that have been made from a capital standpoint in your ERP and that can get pulled in. Uh, then you can drive for looking depreciation off of that. But then there's also the newly planned assets that uh, we're expecting for the upcoming year. So with board, it ha you can build in all of the different um, uh, depreciation rates by the different uh, asset categories. So based on the asset that needs to be acquired, there's obviously expected useful life. And then board will do the forward-looking depreciation to ensure that everything is calculated correctly. And there's obviously the acquisition date or the purchase date, and then there's the in-use date. So board will be able to time the cash flow correctly to make sure that from a cash flow statement standpoint that we're able to see the, the forecasted cash flow falls in the correct uh, period. And then from a forward-looking um, accrual accounting perspective with the depreciation to make sure that it's being depreciated once it goes in use. So all that logic's built in. Uh, we'll calculate the forward-looking depreciation. And then ultimately as well, if you plan to dispose of an asset, you can plan for that as well. So you can input what the salvage value, what the uh, disposal date is, what the disposal value is. To also keep the cash flow um, aspect uh, uh, from a forecasting standpoint accurate, as well as um, making sure that the full PL is calculated correctly if there's a gain or loss on the, the disposition of that asset. And then, of course, seeing all of the visuals below and the breakdown by those different asset categories. Another area that I'll look at is more on the, the financing side. So loans, uh, as an example. So here we could be looking at everything from our short term and uh, financing, midterm, long term financing. So whether it's different credit lines and those different credit lines might have different rates different start rates, uh, start dates and durations. And board will take all of those variables and do a forward-looking forecast to make sure that the schedule is in place. So you can build that out in board and have those calculations all linked in. Uh, also, if you wanted to, you could just, if you have your existing schedules already built out, you could just take the data from that, those schedules and just feed that directly into board as opposed to going down to the granny lev level. But board has the capability to be able to maintain those schedules and build that out within the side of the platform. To, again, to keep that fully integrated view from a planning standpoint. All right. 
And then finally, this would all feed into your final financials as well from a planning standpoint. So we've gone through the full plan end to end, sales, production, operations, procurement, HR, marketing, back office services. And then we have our ultimately our full budget, the full PL top to bottom. So here you can see the income statement, everything's broken down, sales, cost of goods sold, ex external costs, marketing expenses. So you get the full view of everything. And then you cut the comparisons. So uh, also if you're looking at comparisons against prior year, and then once you get into the overall reporting within the year, you can track those variances, add variance commentary. And of course, if you need to drill down into the data, you can do so and see the GL accounts that those plans are against and see how actuals are lining up against that. Also be able to produce forward-looking balance sheets and forward-looking cash flow. So we had looked at purely the budget cycle. This all relates as well to the forecasting cycle, because as you see, we have all these different templates. We're integrated to our source system, so ERP, GL data, sales data, linking into our CRM data, uh, our HRIS and payroll data. All that data is coming into the system. So board has the ability to have different versions, forecast scenarios. So you're able to get the full view of everything as well. So similarly, how we were preparing the budget, all this directly relates to the forecast as well. So whatever your um, uh, forecasting cadence is, so if you're doing forecasting on a mid-year basis, or you're doing it on a quarterly basis, if you're doing it on a monthly basis, board gives you that capability to roll forward your plan, update a forecast. You can do it on a rolling view as well. So if you wanna do it on a rolling 12, uh, rolling 14, 16, 18, whatever it is, you have the ability to do that and have that continuous forward-looking view. And as you update a forecast, then that then gets rolled forward into the next forecast and the next forecast and the next forecast. And then within all of those budgets and forecasts, you have the ability to do scenarios. So if you want to flex the plan in terms of prices, costs, uh, adding new products, different workforce-related assumptions, you can then compare and report on all those different scenarios. And then of course, as you can tell from a visual interface perspective, it keeps the process consistent. So we're going through all of our demand planning, production planning, workforce planning, and getting those inputs updated on the different cadence that we might be doing our forecasting or reforecasting. I'm going to briefly touch upon strategic planning here. I mentioned a little bit earlier, this might be exciting to some. As I mentioned, Board is a truly holistic integrated planning platform. So we're looking specifically around the budgeting and forecasting process. So from a strategic level, the uh, leadership within the organization might be doing a, a multi-year plan where they have uh, growth assumptions, um, strategic objectives and initiatives which ultimately influence the plan. So with board, you can actually do all of the planning and tracking within this platform as well, which then feeds into the budget in terms of setting those targets and guidelines. So board from a strategic standpoint, it, it can do this from end to end as well, looking at macro indicators, uh, cost of capital, setting a baseline, managing strategic goals, setting up strategic initiatives, doing an overview and seeing what the overall projected impact will be at a high level multi-year plan. So I'll go through this fairly quickly. Um, so as you can see here, uh, again, talking very, very high level strategic planning, macro economic indicators, where we might be looking at things like market size, unemployment rate, interest rates, uh, ex forward-looking exchange rates, which would ultimately uh, impact our forward-looking plans. From a weighted average cost of capital perspective, as we look at uh, doing our forward-looking plans as well, and to be able to make decisions uh, on pursuing different strategic initiatives or projects um, and how we value those, we can actually set up our weighted average cost of capital in here, obviously different industry sectors, you can see the breakdown. Then we're setting up our baseline for the strategic plan where we're looking at overall market size, our assumption on market share, a very high level PL of where we wanna be year over year. 
And then that ultimately feeds into our strategic plan. How are we going to deliver on those growth goals? So whether that requires new product launches, uh, whether we need to expand it to new markets, when we need to expand our resource capacity, you can set up these different um, initiatives, link it to those strategic objectives, assign an owner, and then you can start tracking this over time. So whether the initiative has started, what is the start date, what's the due date, and then they can update commentary on those as well as they're tracking those strategic initiatives. Then we can see based on those strategic initiatives, there might be particular uh, metrics associated with it. We can see how that then rolls into the overall strategic plan to say we need to do A, B, and C to deliver on this, and then we get that final view. Then we have the ability, of course, in board to just define scenarios and versions. So here we can actually do assumptions on value creation, assumptions on forward-looking capital allocation. So based on those different strategic initiatives, how are we allocating cop, uh, capital? What's OPEX? What's CAPEX? And then be able to define the scenarios, whether it's in this case, we're breaking it out into conservative, aggressive, or defensive. And so you can look at what those different um, views of the world are. And then getting the final overview to see this is our breakdown from a PL standpoint. Here's our capital allocation assumptions. Here's our profitability waterfall. So we can see how that gets broken down. And then the decomposition charts from a value creation standpoint. The last thing I'm going to go through before I wrap up, uh, we looked at the full planning, integrated planning, end-to-end -end process. And we start getting the picture of how from an integrated holistic organization perspective, all these people, business leaders in the organization have a piece of the puzzle that they contribute. Uh, they can get insights and be able to track that over time. Another key aspect of this is the overall dashboards and reporting at the executive level. So again, very quickly here, of course, we have the ability to create uh, briefing books or flip books. So as opposed to having hard copy printouts, you can create those um, annual reports or quarterly reports directly in the platform with all your standard financials drill down capabilities, commentary, and visuals. You also have the ability from a dashboard perspective, full visuals, whether it's financial or non-financial data. So as the executive team's tracking performance, they get those dashboard cockpit views where they can see how sales are performing, how we're doing from profitability standpoint, how we're doing on a current month basis, year-to-date basis, last 12 month basis, how we're doing against prior year, how we're doing against budget, how are we, is forecast doing against budget, that kind of thing. You can get the full perspective within board. Uh, profitability analysis, EBITDA views of the world, breaking out by legal entities, regions, products, get that full view with drill down capabilities. And then, of course, in addition to the briefing books, the beautiful dashboards, Word also has very excellent Microsoft Office integration. So you can integrate Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. So if you have standard uh, Word documents that you want to integrate with Board, what's actually quite powerful is you can have those um, uh, Word documents linked back into Board that's reading Board data. So if you have an existing Word document and you need to add charts, or in-text references, you can do that directly in Word. And then you refresh it, roll the month forward, roll the quarter forward, roll the year forward. All of the charts and commentary get updated automatically. All right, so all that being said, I'm going to uh, throw up my final few slides here. So as we walk through the board platform, as you can tell, it's quite broad, it has a ton of functionality. and there's a ton of value organizations can get out of this platform. And that's where uh, Corporate Renaissance Group, an acquisitive company, comes into place. We are a premier board partner in North America, and we can help get the most value that you can out of the platform. With our experience, we've seen this many years, multiple industries, uh, different types of mo models, different ways of viewing things. And we can help you from everything from planning budgeting and forecasting, helping with you if you're multi-entity financial consolidations, building additional models, and when you get into the actual um, 
go live mode with your model, uh, we're here to be your partner and support you. We understand your organization. We understand, we know the team, you have a direct contact with consultants that we can help you on that journey to make sure that your, um, your team is supported and as well as we're here to support you on your, your, on your journey. Other things we also help with are uh, other th things you might require, data integrations, data warehousing to other systems. Um, and then also building out different applications such as uh, CFO, CXO dashboards, doing forward-looking forecasting balance sheet, HR analytics. We have all the full expertise across the board. All right, I'm gonna quickly take a look at our Q&A for questions. All right. Just looking for here. Okay, we have one from an anonymous. It says, how does board connect to on-premise systems if it's a cloud application? That's a good question, technical question for this group too. So uh, let me frame this. So board is in the cloud. It's fully secure. It's within the Microsoft cloud. So there's a concept of an on-premise connector. Without getting into too much detail, board can connect into your on-premise applications through a secure application that allows board the board cloud to speak to your on-premise application, and that can be controlled by your IT as well. So fully secure, we have a lot of uh, clients that are on that. And then you can also have um, a hybrid mode where you have on-premise applications that you're tapping into as well as other cloud applications. So some organizations might have still have their ERP or accounting system on premise, and then they might have a CRM in the cloud, such as uh, Dynamic CRM or Salesforce, and then board can tap into that well uh, as well to pull into those different applications into, uh, into the board platform. All right, I, I'm gonna wrap it up there. And Nicole, I'm gonna hand it back over to you. Thanks everyone.